that original statement and the question and like you know how these discussions or um, I guess participation, civic participation happens and things like language, things like the context, things like data. Um, and then we also talked a lot about trust in public institutions and you know how that has kind of changed in varying degrees um, and the importance of that in, in these discussions. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's see. Sure. So, uh, similarly, we talked about the trust. Um, our group had went to various perspectives, some different levels of government and some people working outside of government. Um, we kind of got into a conversation around two, I think, the biggest barriers of what, you know, what participatory governance uh, should look like uh, versus kind of the traditional model of consultation, which in some ways is a bit broken. Um, there's not a lot of trust from people that they're actually being part of, um, and they're kind of having their advice extracted from them and not brought along kind of throughout the entire process, which was uh, discussed kind of in the general introduction this morning. Um, the second barrier that we, that we kind of saw was accessibility and inclusion. Uh, so things like making sure that the language is something that you can kind of uh, discuss depending on where they're, where they're coming from, um, and making sure that you're actually getting a plurality of opinions and not just hearing from the same people uh, who are kind of passionate about that particular issue. So, Great, I'm proceeding to the next group and if we could pick up also like a little piece about uh, how they're measuring like successful participatory uh, initiatives and if people have thoughts on that, it'd be great to hear as well. Um, so, our group spent most of our time uh, discussing um, what we saw as some of the, the barriers to inclusion, um, and especially for um, marginalized groups who we found that often they're the, the groups that are most impacted by the, dis the, the, the discussions and decisions being taken, but are often the ones who, you know, because they're working two jobs or they're from remote communities or they don't have access or technological savvy, they're, they're the, most, the ones with the most barriers and difficulties inputting into the, the, the decision-making process and trying to think a little bit about how to overcome those barriers. Um, one of the things that occurred to me was that, the, that, that we really found impressive in what Taiwan is doing is the accountability on people's input um, and the responses that government needs to give, which we thought helped to address perhaps the, the barrier that's presented by a lack of trust or, or people feeling like their input actually doesn't matter. Um, so we thought that was, that was good. Um, the other main thing we talked about was resolving the tension, and we didn't hear too much about this in the presentation earlier, but resolving the tension between the direction provided by elected representatives um, and perhaps a contrary direction that, or consensus coming out of consultations and how you negotiate that potential conflict. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, so we had a discussion about um, engagement starting from a more human-centric and holistic experience. So acknowledging that people experience um, kind of daily life as a lot more interconnected than what we will often see in governments. Um, so we talked about uh, this question of how government can become more nimble, the idea that no door is the wrong door, so it's coming into um, access services are provided, but that they there's a frustration that's inherent in being kind of bumped around from ministry to ministry. So finding a way to um, integrate people's experiences, um, but also um, the acknowledging like or, or kind of talking through the question of what does digital government between mean for citizens and uh, the interaction between government and citizens. Um, and similar to this group, considering dynamics of power and access and um, certain demographics that might actually um, lose touch with government um, as we move towards more digitally enabled participation. Um, we talked about, for example, older adults um, and the risk of um, with digital governance of the kind of old or status quo methods of thinking within government just being moved to a digital platform, which doesn't really solve the core of um, the issue around participation. Mm. Did I miss anything? Awesome. And then we just talked about 
our life experiences and see the truth <laughs> over us. So we got off topic. <laughs> it's great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. for sharing your insights, uh, and particularly uh, the tension between representative democracy and representational democracy. <laughs> uh, that, that is uh, both uh, a real tension in practice and also in theory as well. Uh, and I hope that the practice that we're going to do this afternoon will shed some light on it, uh, because using design thinking methodologies, at the moment, what we're saying is that we're focusing on the common uh, problem challenge statement. And so we're complementing, but not reinforcing the parliamentarians who handles uh, more of the later, the second time of things. Uh, but that is our current balance in Taiwan. It doesn't, certainly doesn't apply universally. Uh, and so that is something that we have to co-create together uh, to discover. And so a quick show of hands. Um, how many people here have at least heard of or participated in the consultation here? about uh, private taxi companies and Uber and, and whatever. That was just taken, uh, I think, uh, a month or, or a couple of months ago uh, of the, the Uber consultation here. So nobody knows that there is an Uber consultation <laughs> that does here. Right, so um, yeah, as far as I understand that the current version of the PTC or the Uber uh, regulation, ride sharing regulation, uh, was passed around two years ago here. Uh, and after two years uh, of practice, there's various issues about accessibility, about uh, its impact on road and congestions and whatever, and the con consumer rights and unionizing and whatever uh, that's been um, hearing uh, around places. And so there was a series of consultations that just happened, but we haven't seen the synthetic document. So we thought that it would be an interesting uh, experiment to kind of uh, redo this exercise here uh, as a concrete exercise, assuming that people here uh, all have experience with Uber or Lyft or taxis and, and have first experience of how these operate. And so if people are generally okay with that, I'll hand over to Fang Rui, uh, who will explain if, for example, uh, there is a e petition about the Uber issue here uh, in Toronto. Uh, so uh, what we will actually uh, collect as part of the PO network and how the PO network actually works. So you will be in the role of people participating in collaborative meetings in a PO network, uh, but using local context. So if any of the statements that you receive doesn't actually apply here locally, feel free to just discard, because these are Taiwan context, and feel free just to use it as an inspiration and feel in your actual local context uh, with the actual PPCs and, and the Greater Toronto Area rules uh, as well. So I'll hand over to Tony. So just um, mapping our exercises to the stages that we uh, mentioned this morning, we will start from data collection, structuration, and analysis, because we kind of agree on <laughs> uh, to work on the uh, Uber agenda. So because we want to... Um, A little louder back for the back. OK, sure. OK. So yeah, so um, as we are organizing this um, workshop, we put um, already a on to work on Uber case, so uh, we skip the notice and the data setting part. We, we go straight to the data collection part. So just to give you an idea um, of where we are now. So, but talking about Uber, uh, we're not helping Uber to deliver or come up with a better solution um, of what they are working on now, or a better business for them. Uh, we're talking about uh, the problem maybe around transportation. And so, so we can think what are the problems that Uber is trying to solve. So for example, safety issue, um, long waiting time for public transportation, or maybe it's not eco-friendly and efficient to drive one passenger at a time, etc. So uh, we uh, we would like to open up the the context around why why there is why Uber is existing, like what are the problems that we are trying to solve. Maybe we can come up with um, 
like the problem that we are really we really want to respond to, and maybe we can come up with a better solution than Uber this afternoon. So, um, in order to work through the from data collection to analysis, there are a few tools that we're going to use during the session. Um, so there are issue map instruction, and issue card instruction, blank issue card, and stakeholder map. So, um, so we're at the stage of um, data collection and data structuration and analysis. In order to work on this part, um, issue map instruction is the document that we uh, co-created with the civil servants across uh, 32 ministries. And this is the, the, the framework of the document is um, comprised with context of issue, policy and strategy, and stakeholders. The reason why we want to... Um, And the three parts are, the first one is the context of the issue, and the context of the issue part is comprised with, uh, is comprised of problem description. And once we have lots of problem descriptions, problem statements, then we can categorize them into different uh, categories that we can understand those e information better. Then once we have those uh, problem statement coins, then we, we can start mapping out what, what the existing solutions are. And this is not yet brainstorming part yet, but we need to know what's already out there. So it gives us better information for us to discuss this issue further. And there is one thing that is really important to uh, identify the evidence that uh, respond to each statement. So we can revisit them and see if they're true or not. Also, the second part is uh, identify policy and strategy. And all of the uh, roles are actually linked with each other. So once we have problem statements, we need to um, also uh, re-exam what's already being done uh, within the civil service. And what are the blockers? Because it's really important to identify the blockers so we can really understand um, in, in, at what point we can work towards that. We can, how can we... Um, like, uh, how can we work towards a better future that we can cut across those blockers? And also, uh, it's important to identify the future plans as well and possible resources because the government, there are so many, so much expectations from the citizens toward the government, and the government cannot do everything. So it's very important to identify what other resources uh, is out there and. It can be legislation, it can be uh, human resource, it can be uh, money, or anything that can help deliver the solution forward. And among those information, once we gather those information, we will start to, we will be able to identify um, the stakeholders who initiated, who present those problem statements, who um, think of the solutions that we can start to map out who is in the ecosystem that we have to think of, who are the people who might be impacted, who are the people who conduct the policy, who is the person who will do the executive, and, and etc. So by, by gathering data and mapping out stakeholder at the same time it gives us a better sense of who is missing out. And then once we go through that part, we can start it to uh, reflect those information. Because sometimes we put on the problem statements. Um, and there, are, there, are, there are some times that people don't necessarily agree on certain statements. And the reason why we are mapping them all out is to give us a room to reflect on certain things, and it is the 
it gives us opportunity to start the conversation and really uh, go on a, a solid deliberation based on those information. So the instruction of the issue card um, is the way how we can structure those information in a more efficient way. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about how we can structure those information. I think I will hand it over to facilitators to go through this part. But just to give you an idea um, about this session, what, we, what we're going to do is to open up the discussion around what's the problem that Google is trying to solve, what, are, what is our concerns, and what are our concerns and needs that in this context. So this is the, I picked up some of the statements from the police. Yeah, in the 2015, the police in Taiwan, um, that their, their deliberation has been conducted through the Vietnam process. So you will be able to see some of the problem statements and uncertainty, which is um, sometimes questions, sometimes they are the statement that we have to discuss further so we can understand if they are really problems or we can just resolve those um, concerns by just discussing with each other. And there are also ideas that has already been raised that we can just identify them so we know what's already out there. And also there are resources like fact that we also need them to support some of the statements. And the expected outcome will be like this, conduct this post-it. But today we're going to use the, um, the blank visual card so everyone can really think of um, how we structure the statement and how we can deliver on based on those information. And also we have another stakeholder map. Once we we're done with the statements, then we can start mapping out where where does this statement come from? Um, do we have statements from receivers? So maybe passengers in this case. And do we have statements from the deliverers or other administrators or others who might be impacted by other taxi driver um, association? And during this part, this will allow us to see um, the truth. So every statement is can be can be true, but the fact is the world is so complicated, and each of us has limitation. And in order to perceive the world um, in different ways, and that gives us bias, but. I think bias is not a problem. I think if we can see where people are coming from, if we can see more biased uh, views, then it, it will help us to see the truth. So by doing this whole exercise, um, this will give us more accountability and opportunity to close to the truth. And then we can all work together to a future that we want to achieve. So uh, this exercise, we have 60 minutes. Um, in the beginning, uh, I would like you to think about the, the question that I just raised and look at the existing statements that uh, has been raised in 2015. Then we will come up with our own statements and we will discuss and inform the context of the issue in each group. So at the end of the session, we will have a, a mind mapping about what we understand um, the contact is from problem statement to maybe um, solutions that, that is already out there. Exactly. So um, this instruction will stay on screen. Feel free to uh, consult it. Uh, and there are facilitators who already have practice with this method in each of the four tables, so feel free to consult them as well. And so now it's 
around um, 20 past one already. So it will take exactly 16 minutes, and that is to say it will run slightly over the allocated schedule uh, to 20 past two. And so uh, please, the facilitators in each table uh, start the discussion, and we have one more minute for Alex. Um, just a small note that might be helpful, uh, as like, I was learning this like, yesterday. Uh, um, some core components. So it should be a single, because it's so easy to have a very complex idea down in a single sentence. And that's part of, I think, why this exercise is useful, to separate out like, what a statement might contain in terms of ideas. Like, it might lump together a problem, also the way that you feel about it, also the way that, you know, a lot of things. So the idea is a single idea should be in a single statement and the reference part is about the sources. So it could be if it's based on your like, mother's experience. Um, still a valid source but it does introduce like the ways that it, we can like you know it doesn't compare to for example like a, like a certain kind of scientific study. Is it? Um, so introducing the levels of source and reference was like another key idea that I got. The other one was uh, you don't need to categorize before you write, write the statement. Don't think of the category and then write the statement. Write the statement and then deliberate on it. Yeah, yeah. And then we can categorize the label. So think kind of go wild. Um, and the idea is think of everything possible and then we'll put it on the map. If things overlap, then we categorize them together. Yeah. And so feel free to, uh, as the instruction says, feel free to use your phone and our laptop to do actual research. Uh, um, <laughs> on the actual uh, issue here, and so now we're at time, so please begin. Thank you. 
that's a you want more as a transit user than yeah, No, I, I think uh, just like a, in talking about yeah. air quality and things like that. Um, I don't I don't really know how to phrase that, but yeah, like I as like an Uber like user, you're kind of shielded from some of that. And also the filling of the void, right? So we wouldn't call it the works out of the We just think we had an hour. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. nine full ones are yeah. biased, right? Yeah. Like, don't people use it? Yeah. And yeah. it's also the price gap you think about this one. Like, your Uber costs sure. Sure, yeah. $8 yeah. when I'm here. Yeah, yeah. 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 this yeah. 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 is yeah. Is that a problem yeah. or is it a market yeah. base? Yeah. 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 It's a fact that we should. It's a problem. There's an emergency. It's a problem. It's a young way girl. So, like, if, yeah, exactly. And also, the transit breaks and they price gap. They must know that the stuff is down and then they can jack up more requests than the price. This, yeah. this happens because, yeah, like, there's a huge, huge issue at Lori Young, I don't know, a few months ago. And, like, people, like, I try, I was like, I need to get somewhere. And, like, I go, the cost. Like, it's triple. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, no. no. Well, you, well, in a taxi, you pay more if you're sitting in traffic. Right. But you don't have a start fare that's 700 times higher. Whereas I think when it's a natural disaster, you can start. On the other end of it, so because Uber and Lyft are like subsidized by their investors and stuff, a lot of the time when it's off peak hours, their costs are cheap, like they have discounts, and like especially with pool and things like that, like it, it can be like really, like it's like three dollars, and like you're like this costs me like three dollars and seven minutes, or like three dollars and forty minutes. So we're, yeah. we're not really, we're just basically we're just talking. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just talking. Yeah. So we're going to transition to Meridian and the relationship between different statements. So just make sure to build in some time to expand your thoughts by writing out the statements themselves. And does anyone want to make a statement, like a, an idea of solving these things? Or do we feel that it's okay? Gouging sometimes is unfair, but it's made up for a lot of years. Are you, is, that a, is that a problem or an idea? Because it doesn't sound like an idea. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah
one category might be sort of the These are the categories? Uh, no, no, no. We can make our own. Oh, I see. So what those how about one being um, like wages, workplace protections for drivers? This would be like the sort of background checks, wages, conditions for drivers. I think we could start with fairly specific categories and then lump them together. Or if like a, a category could be like, we could read all the cards in the Yeah, yeah. Like, that category would be worried about being like equity. Yeah. Rather than usually the Usually the They're talking about just drivers. Drivers. Do you want to read them aloud? Yeah, we can do that. Um, maybe I'll just start reading them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And maybe they'll be overlapped too, right? So. I'm hoping there is. Because otherwise, you know, 20 is a category. And then uh, each time we say it, also uh, try to classify if it's like a problem, uncertainty, idea, or resource as well. Um, cost gouging or flexibility frozen funds is both cap based on emergency transit damage. So this is um, an idea of being a cap. Do you want to categorize that as cost issues or damage? Yeah. 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 That sounds like it's like a cost thing, yeah. Um, Uber users are more shielded from air quality impacts of taking transit. So that's is that a question? It sounds like uncertainty. That's a resource. No, what is that? It's not. Yeah. Right. Um, taxis are able to discriminate and pick up the portion of the taxi service, whereas for Uber or the way that Uber is done, um, it's accepted before the pickup. Um, terrible customer service and no accountability mechanism with taxis. Um, so that's a problem. Again. These are kind of sounding weird. Uh, cabs are difficult to find, not enough taxis on the road, or it takes too much time. That's a problem. Um, so that's like lack of taxis. Another ability. Not yet. There is another one. Um, that kind of goes with the um, discrimination one, though. The availability. Affordable rates are hard to come by with taxes. Wow, taxes here suck. No, there's <laughs> one that's not in favor. Are all I, I have some that. Uh, <laughs> 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 I just had a better experience, but there's one again. Okay, affordable rates are hard to come by with taxes. This was affordable rates, so that's cost, uh, cost. So that's saying taxis don't aren't affordable to begin with, even though there's price gouging. Yeah. yeah, it's like two different types. Yeah, value of taxi licenses is being reduced, decimated by the introduction of Uber, making it precarious to be a taxi driver and return on their investment and reducing. So there's a decrease in the return on investment. So it's making it less valuable to be a taxi driver. Yeah, this is kind of like driver's uh, Have we got the base wage? Oh, base wage is about 1505 not or other costs. Which isn't a good or a bad. I'm going to call this one like a resource. That's like a... I think that's not certain. Maybe. It's like, is that good? Well, that's a recent study. That's not good. No, but if you want to go Yeah, okay. I don't know what the tax is. I just don't know what have a public ombudsman for sharing services. So this is specifically ride sharing or just sharing? Yeah, ride sharing. So you're going to add the ride. Well, I think I was thinking general 
So like for an Airbnb as well? Are you then classifying as taxi as a sharing service, or this wouldn't affect taxis? I'm going to put say won't affect taxis. That's an idea. Yeah, that's some sort of legislation. Um, okay, so ride sharing increases useless traffic. Um, drivers need to wait for ride shares. Um, so this is against the this is against Uber. No regulation from volume air quality. So this is like the other side of the <laughs> Uber drivers are also causing <laughs> bad air. But traffic is more than, oh, I guess it's still environmental. It's, like it's the city quality. Um, regulate Uber and taxis the same way, regardless of how that works. Uh, yeah, so this would be, this is an idea. Have we been adding a little dots there? Yeah. This one doesn't, uh, this is a problem. Is that one? Uh, uncertainty. Okay, the other one's good. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is this is an idea of some sort, kind of like accountability. It kind of just like negates the different story for taxes. Um, yeah. um, Uber has been aggressively avoiding double laws and taxes, not in good faith. Um, this is one I wrote. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. It's kind of other accountability. It's kind of just like they're being mean. Um, have a cap. Have a cap on surge pricing. This one was done for us. So that's my idea. Yeah, Uber slash taxis should be price gouge. Idea. Taxis don't tell you how much it costs before you ride. Opportunity cost is hidden, and Uber puts cost up front. This is kind of environment, actually, but it's also it's also equity. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, I think it's also partially the equity piece. So. It's like informed. Yeah, yeah. Like this entire discussion isn't specifically why is Uber bad. It's like how do we fix this problem? So one of the solutions might be give taxis some way to show up front. If that's what people are wanting. Um, is that not true? I guess nothing shows up. Just get it, yeah. <laughs> you just get it and ride? Well, that's the thing. Like, for me, okay, we're doing this so I won't get into it, but like, that to me is also like an equity issue because you have to have a certain amount of like, money to just waste if you have a tax credit because you don't know how much it's going to cost in the end. <laughs> They do it, but you can catch them. <laughs> um, there should be a priority to protect the quality of jobs and avoid creating more precarious workers. Uh, equity for uh, drivers, though. We had another, this is kind of like this one though. Wage conditions? Oh, wage conditions, yeah. It's kind of, so it's like equity instead of wage conditions. Wage conditions and equity for you. Because we're definitely going to have a ride. Well, both of All of its men, the ride sharing for gig economy is That's an idea. Oh, okay. Uh, Uber drivers should be more qualified. Make sure they are. Uh, and then the, the explanation given is uh, they're self-employed and there's no more for Uber drivers. So they have to like be better. So it's a problem. Uh, okay, it's like a, a requirement. It's a regulation. Maybe it's uncertain. Can I change cost and affordability? Yeah. 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 Yeah
So you need another idea. Maybe it's in these problems here, to be honest. Okay. Um, so Uber has been aggressive in avoiding local laws and taxes. Not a good thing. Yeah, we definitely need another one. Yeah. 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 And there is one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we can take one out. We can take one out. It might just be the same thing. Uber, 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 it's a no, different thing. It's, it's about yeah. like training for drivers. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a good thing. Yeah. 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 But with also yeah. some yeah. drivers. Yeah. 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 Ye
will need dogs, and there's a low barrier to entry to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, but we're also saying that these new jobs are getting more experience. Yeah. See, yeah. yeah, I would love it if there was some sort of like Uber, 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 yeah, so ride sharing increases useless traffic from um, providers. Um, what's this thing about air quality? Yeah. Oh, this thing here. Yeah. 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 Y
there are certain key elements that can help us quickly uh, come down this part. So as we already did problem statements, we can easily uh, capture three different uh, information based on our practice area. So what, what are the things that we want to change? That's, that's things that we want to we wanna capture. So we can capture those information based on the problem statement that we discussed. And then, who is the primary audience? It doesn't necessarily need, it need to be citizens. It doesn't necessarily need to be users or receivers. It can be um, people who deploy the service or policy. It can be anyone who is in the ecosystem. So we can refer this back to the stakeholder map that we did and see how we can help those people who, in the, who, who are in the ecosystem. And then also, uh, what's the outcome? So, you know, so like being able to write a good uh, challenge statement uh, you only need to capture those three important elements. And because there are so many uh, problem statements that we've discussed already, so I think this is the time where we can reflect again on those information that we already structured and see what are the priorities. Then we can kind of capture those information and combine the best sentence and the, the most sensible sentence that all of us are agree on. And once we are able to uh, generate several challenge statements, then we are in a good position to uh, generate ideas that we can respond to those questions that we framed. Is this clear? Okay, cool. So we will have um, 45 minutes Maybe because we, we did go over time, so maybe that's uh, work on this for uh, thir 30 minutes. Let's see if we can finish this in 30 minutes. Okay, so over to the facilitators. And also, uh, if you'd like, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, feel free to grab snacks and sort of, uh, we're going to informalize the coffee break so that we have more time for more informal interaction as long as we're kind of getting through the regulation. Uh, so yeah, the challenge statement is just like a few components on this uh, uh, concept. And then uh, you'll have some of you have to put to go ahead to get on these things.
Association of Arab Diplomats. So, opportunities for newcomers while addressing environmental concerns. Personal transport, which is what I'm calling like taxis and rideshare, because it's, it's not possible to transit. Personal transport in Toronto for drivers, riders, and the environment, so that everyone can enjoy safe rides and have costly surprises. Very good. I am too, but they're kind of a mix of yours. So I This is also the point. Hers is the intersection of the environment. Fair, equitable, cost effective, accessible, rapid form of transportation. Point A to point B. That's all affordable. Yeah, this is all affordable. Never mind. There's one thing I just Let's just make everything amazing. How much we improve it? Well, that's why I started with improved personal transport in Toronto. That's like it. I just I don't care about anything else. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But like if you're given the opportunity to fix this sort of like ride share problem and instead you say we're going to ignore it and build better transit, that's not going to solve the problem of the ride share stuff is still crappy. Like you can build transit and then also fix the ride share stuff at the same time and it'll kind of shift over. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. I don't think the issue is argument. I think the issue right now is methodology. We're being asked to determine methodology. In terms of exercising at hand, we have to clearly identify what is the problem around the global economy. Why prompt in that? To get to places, it needs to be affordable, it needs to be fast and reliable. It doesn't have to be far, it's a form of transportation. It's also a million. I've never used Uber in Toronto, ever. The only time I've ever used Uber is when I'm over some. Because it's familiar. But the best way. And I don't have it. But the other problem is that country. Yeah. Uber will not be an option for any of us if we make it any more successful. Because there will be so many cars, so much congestion, that even if the cars are electric, I will be able to see that you're across the street and have 40 votes to solve the problem. If we add a million cars, none of us will want to take Uber because we'll just sit in the car all day being here. Yes. 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 Regardless of how good public transit is, there's always going to be something that fills that 
uh, personal transport piece. And that can either be everyone has their own cars, or we start doing this sort of like taxi slash ride sharing thing where cars are shared in a ride sharing thing. So I think we can focus on like, making this system work well and then talk about public transit later. Because I agree, public transit is like the be all end all, but if we just focus on that, this is never going to work. Yeah, and so part of that is like creating, like improving both taxi and Uber, like not favoring one or the other. Okay, so I think we have, I think from what we have on the table without adding any of the public transit pieces or anything else, we can come up with some sort of LMA statement. Questions and we have a piece of ice cream. And maybe just become some giant statements. What's like, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. We're coming to consensus, right? It's converging into the group. Oh, so, in terms all of these are also, are these from the user's point of view? Also that? Uh, these are from the user and system perspective. Can you combine both or do you want to keep them separate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, I think that's what we're trying to do. We're really keeping common ideas. I don't know if it's feasible to like combine all of these and try to make a single thing. I think we can, it would be so aspirational that it would be We want we want an affordable, safe, regulated, non-precarious ride program that will fill the gaps. That's pretty hard to work like right now. I'd like to do all put in the job of the So it's not interesting. We did it. Story, right? 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 Hey, hey, hey. So hey, yeah. I can try again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thinking something about the taxes. What did we talk about specifically, like the ideal, um, what did I call it? Uh, personal transport thing. Like not thinking about taxis or Uber. What's the ideal one? So it sounds like it's it's a regulated environment that raises tax money, doesn't cost fair price, I'll say fair price. Provides a fair price and creates stable, safe work environments. Yeah, also provides cost control. To me the question is how can we mainstream ride sharing apps to effectively reduce the cost of transportation in Down That's like the business model. No, no, but this doesn't have to be whatever. How can we regulate ride sharing? Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be ride sharing. Okay, we're talking about personal yeah. transport. So, yeah. so yeah. to the point that it mimics the taxi industry. Well, then you just repeat all the options. Well, no, we're improving the taxi industry too because a lot of our problems up here are with the taxi industry, and it has to do with. Um, it's becoming more precarious, first of all, so taxis are already doing the yes point. And like, our, our, our aspirational state, there are yeah. people, they want a transportation ecosystem, but that is falling, but also that is a gas. And that is the price. Equitable, stable, work conditions for drivers, cost controls for users, and mechanisms for revenue. And environment. Without <laughs> destroying the economy and putting a million extra I mean, yes. yes. Destroying the environment. I mean, the more it succeeds, the more cars are growing. Like, I can't help it. I'm like, 
No, but when, it, but when it's last, on the road, when it's first and last, but they are already on the road. We're not going to be so Okay. Well, our like ideal situation. <laughs> I thought we were getting started. Yeah, yeah. 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 How am I we? Fair wise. How to be. Uh, so it's it's like a yeah. it's that last gap, right? Fill that last gap. Uh, so Sustainable employment opportunities for safe, sustainable, equitable, and planning conditions for drivers, affordability for users, and environmental. So I think you got it. So safe there. Safe at a very stable driver. And what I think, and the same has to do with the users. Some of the onus, I guess, then is you know, they have to not be. Like overtaking, like on routes that are already served by transit, right? Like that's what the complementary aspect of it is. Like that's how you reduce congestion. You work in cooperation, but you know that you don't have to that everyone doesn't all sit in the same corner, idle in their cars and just your rides. That's it. And if some of this revenue goes into improving transit and road infrastructure, and Uber. Hello everyone, now it's coffee break, so feel free to take some break for 10 minutes and then come back at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Then we have to like get rid of them and make them Tax dollars? Is that what you're saying? What was the point? What are you thinking for? Yeah, this this is just a solution. It's not really a question of it's just a solution we framed. Because I'm the second thing right now that I don't know what I'm going to do. I think that's one of the big problems. It's actionable. In a question. Yeah. So it's not really a discussion. What is the point of this? So I think this is for us or this is experience what the like process might look like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so this is what they do with yeah. this. <laughs> and they're engaging us in the exercise. Oh, yeah. It's not All my so many diversions of the process. I give up. That's exactly what we need. That's everything. Oh. Yeah, and that's not a solution because I have no solutions to that. We got some. Yeah, but it's like it's not one solution, right? No, but this is a yeah. whole like. It should be considered sparring. Uh, I feel like <laughs> We're saying regulate, so maybe integrate. Well, regulate. Well, is it regulate? But we're going to have to regulate. Yeah. So okay. If we just regulate. We don't, as a municipality, step up and share our data. So we're getting into this. Well, yeah, I kind of like the the idea of. Yeah. We're not saying how. We're but like the integrate ride sharing transit into the transit ecosystem, I think that solves a lot of the problems. It has to be a collaborative partnership with not super profit yeah. Like ride sharing yeah. models. Like that like that's that's the reality is for this to happen. They have to like you know So we prefer Uber to be both. Which is more expensive for users though. Well we said fair prices. Fair prices. Because like if Uber is creating cheaper rides because it's not thinking about the environment.
environment and everything else. Is this for social minded? Yes. How? Lyft? Um, it's their entire business model is being like, hey, we're not Uber. I've noticed that in the popular culture, whenever there's a ride sharing in a television show or a movie, it's always Lyft. Yeah, I'll pay for that. It's cheap. Okay, when do we, when do we, um... Also, someone wants to write that so it's three to four times. It's like three to four times. I can rewrite. Actually, I'm not sure I can write. You can also edit better, because I just ran out of There's like wheels. Everyone is happy, okay? They also don't have the opportunity to do This is exactly what it was. I don't know how much I believe that they're like more equitable, but I think I have a friend that works at Lyft, so I'll pretend to be smart. I know people who work at Lyft. They are okay. Oh, I mean, oh, that's nice. Oh, yay. That's fun. Hmm? I know many of them. Everything we're going to give me will be transparent. I think it's like, I'm sure. It just makes it look like we were less proud. I'm from Lexington. I'm from Lexington. And I'm here in private. I'm happy to do that. Because all the everything needs to be purchased. Yeah, Kristen. When was the last year they ever talked first? So anyways, it's gone my friends, boyfriends, as well as my friends, and that's I think about the same thing. Is this yours though? One of those. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. 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 We've got fairly good, I think mine is the worst. I don't even use Those last few exams, you were still like, I can't do this. <laughs> never going to write again. Do we want to look at the stakeholder map? We threw up some stuff really quickly. I just we. I think we covered the top. I added taxi companies. And low income rentals. Oh, okay. well, I mean, it's like I thought it said governance. The other ones is uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're actually pretty close. <laughs> this is like writing very quickly. <laughs> is this ours? Should we be using this thing? No, not yet. It's not ours. Not yet. Okay. Oh, I think ours is down here. I think that was No, that was for the fifth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay.
that may help you deliver that solution. And there is risk, risk and barriers. So sometimes when we come up with solutions, uh, there, there are risks or blockers to that solution. So it's also very important for us to identify those risks and blockers so we don't create another problem based on the solution that we come up with. And once we are sure that um, we eliminate those risks and barriers, then we can come up with the final solution over here. So here you can see that um, the whole process is really logical. We identify, identify problem, we generate statements, come up with possible solutions, and we have resources to those solutions. We think of risks and barriers, and then come up with a more holistic uh, solution. Then the last, the last two things is to link those solutions to uh, we shouldn't be government bodies. We should be any kind of organizations or related bodies um, that can execute those ideas. So we know who is actually being able to deliver those ideas. Then at the end, we can think of three questions. So for example, um, what might be gained in the near and far future? And how will you measure the success based on those um, solutions that you come up with? And how can we review the service and policy in the future? So once you uh, we go through all the steps, uh, we can have a, a solid possible sol solutions that we can take that further to the uh, in-depth design phase. So any questions for now? Okay, so for this session, uh, we have one hour, so 30 minutes for co-creation, and then we will leave 30 minutes for um, presentation from uh, four groups. So from now on, uh, it's 10 past three, so we will work until um, 20 to four. Then we will invite one of, um, one of you in each group to present your ideas to all of us. Thank you, so over to closing the papers. I think we can put the meta problem up, but then we want to put like two main problems underneath that. Maybe. Have like three total common themes. Yeah, this is basically just to say like what would be the top two other common themes? I think the one that you can use is more This one. That's the one that has the most. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, I think that's the one. And then, what's the one that has the second name? Yeah, for Karen. Mine was in general. Was it for Karen? You guys both have it. And then we have the other one. And then, that was the thing that was in the room. This was traffic. This was public um, infrastructure. And this has reduced the number. So these are the same. Yeah, are we missing anything? Yes, we are. Okay, our QPR community. No, this was a draft. And I've taken my note because mine was in the general. So this was this one. Uh, so there's four, yeah. So one, two, three, four. So that's, we can do that. These are all kind of the same. Um, actually. We could. Um, most of the environment ones are actually about like congestion. I like adding But I guess congestion So this is like too many cars. Too many cars. Um, prices.
This is the helmet we have. So this is our big helmet. We have three smaller helmets and three groups.
Well, we can do new problems as well, oh, so we can do a fix. Yeah, let's find solutions that solve each of those things specifically. Yeah, so it sounds like taxation of some sort. Of, like, use a different sticky note for We can also use one of these. But the problem specifically was more congestion. There was more How would we Yeah, I'm not finding any solutions here. Yeah, so you can't, so you can't go past Kennedy Road. Because it's wrong with the system, right? I cannot. Oh, like the system will shut down. I won't be available on the app. Well, how does this work for, like, so for the airport, right? Like, the first time you have to go to the airport, how does that actually work? There's not one that you have to go to the ground floor. I thought, uh, maybe this is new, because I feel like before it was usually in the airport. Yeah, but that's, that's just protecting an older system, right? It's not improving the entire uh, ride sharing uh, transit. It's a precarity of work. How do you fix it? Can we just have like a base wave? Is a base wave like that? See, this is interesting how this small viewers like, it's like flexible for new people, right? So if there's a minimum number of words, what if something is saying at the end of Yeah, you need to do 
So, I'm just going to put this guy on the desk over 35 hours, full time to wait. What about the, um, I like the idea of moving data from the transmitting state so that you can have a few of the changes that you want about how this is not actually so
There's cities that like, um, if there's not no bus service, like on your side, they'll basically just say like, we'll use Uber instead, and like the city pays for it. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same cars for the yeah, like, yeah. solution here is like, it's a matter of like, Uber or taxis. They should all provide really good service, and like, it should be affordable, and some of the money should go towards something good. Yeah, like, if there was yeah, some like way to be affordable, affordable for low income people, I don't care if it's affordable. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Like, <laughs> saying, like accessible, <laughs> like, cost effective. <laughs> like, we could just do, we could just do the fair, equitable, accessible form of transportation for everyone else, and then cost effective for those that need it. Yeah, you can't call them up and be like, I don't know. Yeah, you can't call them up and be like, I don't know. Yeah, you can't call them up and be like, I don't know. Yeah, you can't call them up and be like, I don't know. Yeah, you can't call them up and be like, I don't know. Yeah, that's how we I guess that's how we raise the That's how it is. But then we just it's not done in the city because yeah, uh, Also, just a brief plug, uh, we did manage to refresh the cup of coffee. Sorry, it took us like, a little longer than anticipated. So, if anybody's in need of their afternoon coffee, please go ahead and take
Part of it, yeah, 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 part of it is because like suddenly there's no cars in this area and then cars are visible. Um, for dumb reasons. For capitalistic reasons. Oh, it's like, okay, this is a second lift, but lift, um, during the day, one of the reasons for that is they had, like, free, yeah, right, it was, like, one of the houses left, sure, everyone in this area, you need to get home, they had free rides, they had So it's like an advertising, it's like a really good advertising for them because it helps people and it helps their like their attitude. So are we? Oh look, that first. Yeah. Um, there's also I'm gonna make a solution off of the one uh, discrimination. <laughs> Sort of like uh, I don't know how we do this, but like encourage sort of like um, some it's like confirmation of people before they get to the place. You know what I'm saying? So it's not just like waving taxis down, but like taxis down. Like, no windows on the house. Yeah. 
try to have like regular, just like uh, designated stuff. And like now, that doesn't matter. I think that's another thing. Yeah, because like they'll stop, especially if you're going to have a street corner. They'll just be stuck in the middle of the road and like all your luggage and your luggage and your station. Like you just need to make some stops. stop. So like this is the stuff in a lot of this. Like not parking, just stop. Like, stop. like if we could tear up all the parking lots and just make them stop in lots, that would probably be okay. <laughs> well, this is the thing. We're like, we're we have to think of ourselves because, like, it's like we need to stop driving into Toronto, and then we're also like, we need to stop Ubering into Toronto, and we're not making any like education in the way we get around. Yeah. 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 But the reason an area is also the reason an area is served is because of the like rush hour is because there's more people that serve. Like it's not the producer area usually has less business. That's why it's a Um, this is meant to be a taxi. <laughs> 
<laughs> consistent and sure. Like these are just companies, right? So how do you make companies play together? If we want them to be like a holistic thing, how do we make them play together? Hey folks, uh, we're going to regroup uh, to share from all the groups uh, the results of co-creation. Um, we can have one main person per group, but then have others organically jump in as necessary. Uh, we are thinking, how about, uh, since we're sharing, do we all want to sort of migrate over to whoever's sharing and then kind of travel that way, like around the room? So if we all get out, uh, kind of, uh, are you guys comfortable to start? Sure, so if we all come up over here, then we can uh, share some of the co-creation insights. sharing or, or these private uh, like ride providers are coming out of maybe a broken transit system so that's where we were playing then we looked at you know the different stakeholders I'm sure you all look at them um, you know we saw Uber in our case study but we threw in Lyft because it's a competitor we should think about it in terms of competition uh, regional transit agencies even automakers that are maybe partnering with some of these firms um, and I'm sure you guessed all the rest of them. Um, then we sort of synthesized into a few core problems. So uh, congestion being an issue, uh, broken transit system, trying to make this transition into a new mobility uh, model that works for drivers, and then just trying to ensure uh, more personal safety rather than like road user safety. Um, we were thinking from the perspective of vulnerable passengers. Um, and then we went through some how might we use, they're, they're pretty good, I won't read them, but they kind of focused on these values of safety, equity, accessibility, uh, not stifling innovation, sustainability, efficiency, and vibrancy. And then we looked at some possible solutions. So we looked at, you know, better integration of, uh, you know, bike sharing, uh, looking at maybe congestion pricing, uh, having uh, ride sharing firms better integrated with mass public transit, just to move people and goods uh, more efficiently. And then we looked a little bit into you know what we can do about like workers' rights, um, you know ensuring that they're they're protected. Uh, and then we looked at some of the barriers. A lot of our barriers came to like political will kind of issues since public transit has big price tags. Uh, and then also these are big firms with deep pockets and you know there is some political issues there. Um, and then we just looked at in terms of, I'd say specifically for protecting workers. Protecting workers could come at higher prices like the drivers and how, do consum how will consumers respond to that? So thinking about it as consumers rather than just you know kind of vulnerable workers and what maybe some of our our uh, barriers are there. And then we looked at some solutions. In terms of our solutions, we thought, 
you know, if we do integrate uh, Lyft and Uber into mass public transit, we need to look at how we can better integrate cabs too, and also maybe other transit providers, just so it's a relatively level playing field. Um, and then uh, instead of having a lot of many rules potentially uh, on workers, we could try to promote a sort of minimum wage or minimum fare uh, at the firm level rather than as a government level, uh, because that might help uh, promote you know, Lyft or Uber as a better company since a lot of people are switching between them. Maybe you want to just choose one. You get more loyalty that way. Um, I think you probably all know about the responsible body, city, federal government for big transit prices, province, uh, NGOs and not-for-profits and the firms themselves. Um, and then some of the things that we were looking at in terms of what success looks like, you know, increased productivity for all road users, uh, better reputations for uh, public transit, but also the firms, uh, happier transit riders, anyone who's like suffered through psychological issues riding the subway in the morning, <laughs> or, or you know, transferring uh, south at Young, that, that really sucks. Um, and then just uh, increased transit use and mode share, so just mixing the different modes that you're using rather than just driving. And then one of the things that we thought we could measure it, um, there's the big data, but then maybe since we're trying to measure things like happiness, getting a little bit more qualitative, like uh, focus groups and interviews. So that's that in a nutshell. Yeah, thank any, you so much. Any questions, or do we care for that? We'll do that later. I don't know. It's your process. Is, it, is there anything <laughs> that um, resonates with you in regards to the process um, in your practice? Like, how do you do this part in your practice? Anything that you would like to share with us? From the crowd, from the group? Yeah, anyone. Okay. Uh, so a lot of this I do in my day job, you know, defining a good problem and then coming up with solutions. Uh, later, using similar methods. Uh, I think the, the biggest one for us was just thinking about uh, more non-traditional government responses. Like, how do we, how do we make changes without having an overly heavy hand or focusing only on regulation. Um, at least I, I know I pushed my group there. Um, so that, that's a big takeaway for me. I think you had your hand up. Well, I, I, I just was wondering about, did anyone else experience the feeling of saying, this would be great, but as if that would ever happen. That notion of like stopping yourself from having a good idea because you didn't think there was political will or it didn't seem realistic. And then you're like, yeah, but I don't think we have to be necessarily realistic. But then you get so aspirational that you're reinventing the economy <laughs> to see your own ideology. <laughs> but I was just wondering if that was a challenge for the people that they thought, well, sure, that would be great, but that couldn't happen, so then what? And is that part of it? Is the idea of, of um, stopping yourself from having an idea that seems unrealistic politically? Like, is that a, is that a challenge for other people? Mm -hmm. And is that part of the process and it's healthy? Because this is at the very early stage of idea development, so we do encourage people to go crazy. And, but then when we reach the amount of the possible solutions, then we can start to think in a more rea realistic way. Because we, if we go for realistic in the, in the beginning, then there, there will be no innovation. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's so okay for, for now. So things that you yeah. don't think would ever have the votes to pass in the current government. Like it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. And that, that kind of idea can be a provocation for you to carry on the conversation with other people. From our experience, I know that Tess uh, said, are we maybe trying to solve a bigger problem than just Uber? Or something kind of paraphrasing, but yeah. that was more or less the, the question posed to the group. And that helped focus us a little bit, but also without kind of getting rid of good ideas. Okay, yeah, let's move to the next group. Thank you.
had two nominating statements focusing one on the negative externalities that are imposed by ride-sharing um, companies on the uh, society or the social system as a whole and how to be covered them, which may have been a little bit too broad. Um, and then another one is how do we identify an appropriate level of quality and safety that drivers should be abiding by, whether they're in a traditional taxi or in a ride-sharing service. Um, and we had a, a lot of ideation about what was possible and to the point that was just raised, we did find um, a lot of our ideas, we actually had the barrier stage, there were clear barriers either in that it would increase direct cost to consumers, what would the effect of that be, or that um, it might just almost regulate Uber's business model out of existence, which there were questions and tensions around, is that the role of government, will it stifle innovation? Um, and that's kind of where, where we stopped in, in trying to figure out what potential solutions there were for uh, the barriers that we put forward. One thing that I will say just personally is uh, being asked to come up with a barrier and then think about the solutions that will solve the barrier is different from what I've done in the past, which is more so just listing barriers and then try to evaluate an, an idea based on how many uh, barriers or, or roadblocks and need uh, more constructive framing. Uh, and it was interesting as well to have a more structured way to break uh, up our conversation about the uh, issues here, which I think is more helpful than just a, a kind of flurry of post notes that I've seen happen before in the other breakdown processes. So I really, this part was supposed to be really useful and I'll look to uh, adapt it in other uh, contexts. Who else wants to say quickly about Solutions. Yeah, I agree that this this whole um, activity right here, um, I mean, that's maybe kind of exercises in the past. This approach felt a little more maybe got us to those um, kind of they may be broad, but there's a lot of conversation going on. Absolutely, right? um, it got us there. It's probably faster. So, uh, so I kind of like this uh, this framing of this particular phase of the activity. And I have actually one question. This process, um, is this a process that you, know, you do internally when you sort of bring in you bring in feedback and you sort of put it through this process to sort of help you get through it? Or is it a process that you do in situations like this, like focus groups or you're bringing lots of town hall people in town hall? Um, or is it like a full time process where you have government officials and, and stakeholders? Like how, is, how do you use this process? Yeah, okay. So um, in our practice, um, because in my slide I mentioned that the government needs to trust children first. So the government should um, share the data that we put the government first. But because a lot of the issue that we're dealing with is uh, first government issues. So some of the data that we get, um, some of the ministries, they don't necessarily share the data with each other. So we would like them to share the, the data. Um, among those departments. So uh, we do this internally in, when we have an issue, when, when they got an issue that is voted during the monthly meetings, and then we will conduct the research phase, starting mapping out all of the data that each ministry has. Then we will share the, the data, so we usually put it in the spreadsheet, and then visualize that uh, with the mind mapping format. So we do have different views to those data. And then we share those data with wider stakeholders who is going to join the collaborative meetings or conversation. So we do this internally beforehand, but then we open this data up for wider stakeholders to revisit and re re exam if those things make sense to them. And they can also contribute their data to, to the mind map, and so we can accumulate and build on what we already have um, when the time goes by. Mm -hmm. I think one of the areas where we struggle a little bit on is um, kind of prioritizing for the challenges once we go from this phase to uh, the ideation. 
So I'm just wondering, like, if, if you, based on your experience, what are some of the prioritization things that you use from your perspective, from dealing to uh, the challenges they face, or do you address all of the issues? Okay. Yeah, so when we finish the mapping over here, uh, people tend to um, have a moment and reflect back to all these things again. So they, they can be able to see, um, see the, the issue from a clear, clear perspective. And then people will get to a point where they have a strong consensus about what the priorities are. Then they will uh, prioritize those things and look at each other. Usually people, like I noticed that some of the food, when you were talking about your challenge statements, uh, people start nodding and they all this is really important. And when we get to the point where your statement that people feel resonate the most, then we will prioritize those issues and generate ideas based on those priorities. So I don't know how this I think it was like for me personally, it was a bit of a question mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, you know, like looking at the stakeholder map, okay, and then, like, how does that feed into an uh, ultimate analysis of this? What is kind of a question for me? Yeah. yeah. So for the research phase, um, because each data has a, a source, uh, so we, when we generate, when we collect those data, structure those things, we can analyze uh, who represents those those views. Then we have stakeholders that are linked to all of these data. So, and then so once we're collecting data and map the stakeholder at the same time, we will be able to see who is marginalized or who who should be on the on the map but we are not neglecting their voices. Mm -hmm. So we use this methodology to map the ecosystem as well as to represent uh, our research piece. And once we have that as a base um, and this, so this will transform to the uh, part. And once we generate our, um, solutions, we also need to revisit the map again to see what will be the future of the stakeholder network one to deliver the solution. So this is the existing map, but once we finish the solution part, then we can reorganize that to fit to the future scenario, and then we can com compare which one is better. Is it actually solving the problem that we're trying to address one? Well? Yes, 
but they may not extend, they, they may only extend to a certain portion of all the activities that are taking place. Now we've talked about um, Uber um, needing its, or having its contractors submit a, a, a HST rather than doing it in itself, and um, that, that is kind of a, a move to prevent Uber from having to be fast, but also it's harder for the, the contractors to remember to do that and each other issues. So the level of responsibility uh, that a, a platform service has to its contractor, I think is an area where we haven't really set proper standards that they need to be um, looked at more. more. Maybe in an ideal future, this might mean that if Lyft pays more, we'll drive 
have to go towards this, there's more lift availability, and yes, they're more expensive than Uber, but hey, if I can only go to lift, my neighborhood, I'll have to pay more for the lift. The market then might actually shift towards drugs being paid for the lift, but maybe not. Um, and then the resources around that was kind of reform, legislation, financial, and also um, the current bylaws that regulate Be like community groups, car salespeople around this area, and having the city and government, banks and finance, I think, and finance. Any questions, reflections? Yes, um, just to sort of work, uh, some of the truth, because I think it sounded like some sort of way to get. More money to the drivers. Yeah. So, yeah. Some of the other ones. Um, so some of the other ones we had were I think we did one last time. Yeah, we just regulate. I think it's kind of like regulation. Like how we regulate? Um, how do we tax the company that doesn't make money? Um, you know, do we need to change how? Like, <laughs> Um, so we kind of, we made all these problems and everything like we were supposed to, we put them into sort of quasi-categories and nothing really fit, and then we had to create a lot more solutions because we only had problems. Um, uh, but yeah, one of the interesting things that no one said so far is we found that we were creating differentiations between uh, things that are problems for the riders and things that are problems for the drivers. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up in, on our stakeholder map putting uh, environment as one of our indirect stakeholders as one, oh, this is kind of an ideal state stakeholder map, I guess, because currently it's not um, one of the stakeholders, but that was one of the ones we put in there. Um, what are other interesting things we did? Uh, we ended up having a lot of problems that ended up being uh, with the taxi service rather than Uber itself, whereas we came into this thinking, oh, Uber's going to be the one that we're like lambasting, and then it actually solves a lot of problems that are in Toronto's current taxi system as well. Um, so that'll actually feed into our value statement later. Whereas as we were going through this, we kind of realized that the entire ecosystem of this like ride sharing, um, it's not public transit, but it's not a personal vehicle, that sort of middle ground in there. Um, every solution we have right now isn't completely ideal. So the ideal solution would be awesome, like make taxis better as well as make Uber better for everyone sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we had like cost and affordability for users was the piece over there. Um, account, accountability and regulation was a piece, and some of that had to do with like discrimination from taxi drivers, as well as like Uber being very aggressive towards local governments, stuff like that. Um, equity for drivers and better wage conditions, um, with a uh, uh, priority placed on the fact that it's being uh, it's kind of precarious work. Then we also talked about environment and air quality as a big problem, and the fact that like if we make this category of transit really good. There's going to be more cars on the road and what problems that could come with. And then we have equity for riders, which looks like we ended up pulling out all the problems into other things. But equity for riders is also important. Um, someone else say something now. Okay. I uh, don't have the problems, maybe? Uh, I can start with it, and if somebody else wants to continue. I'll do the value. So that was in there for yeah. the full thing. So, in terms of some of the core problems, um, uh, we talked a lot about um, precarity of work because uh, the sharing economy does not always benefit necessarily everybody. Um, yes, it expanded the pool of the, in terms of the number of people who could utilize, you know, uh, right sharing as a way of getting some revenue, but how much are they paid? Is this a safe uh, job for them? And also the precarity creates for the tax industry. 
Uh, impact on uh, road use. Um, obviously, increased uh, cars on the roads means more congestion, and it also has adverse um, impacts on the um, environment. Uh, we also talked about the lack of affordability um, and customer service. Um, so one of the initial reasons listed in favor of Uber was that they provided better customer service. Um, but ultimately, is it really affordable for all? If you look at lower income brackets, um, and um, with things such as search pricing, at times with Uber, it isn't um, necessarily affordable for everybody all the time. So we did spend a bit of time talking about fair pricing and the difference between that and affordability. Yeah, so with all this, um, we got all those problems stuck up on the board here. And then as soon as we sent, sat down to do the, the value statements, we did a bunch of value statements individually. We came together and we immediately brought up the fact that, wait, why do we even care about these ride sharing things? They're taking away from public transit. Like, we really care about public transit way more than we do about Uber being successful in the end. Or even like, even taxis. Taxis just fill a gap of that last mile. Um, whereas if we like really fixed public transit to the point where it even covers last mile, none of this would be a problem anyhow. Um, which is a bit of like a maybe too big picture in this case. So we brought it back down. Um, and we tried to just create the ideal state for what this like last mile ride sharing um, piece of transit could look like. Um, and it's this beautiful statement here, um, which is far too ideal. It says, um, how might we regulate and integrate ride sharing transit into the transit ecosystem, so that's public transit and everything else, uh, in a way that creates safe and equitable jobs, fair prices, good service, revenue for infrastructure, and environmental benefits, so that everyone is happy. <laughs> Um, so that's what we're trying to do here. <laughs> and we kind of had three groupings from the individual ones we made here, um, where we talk about precarity of work, which also includes um, opportunities for newcomers as well, as it is a fairly easy job to get into. Um, especially, we're talking about specifically like Uber. Um, and taxis, the problem there was it was very hard to become a taxi driver in a lot of ways and keep that. Um, so the idea that the money from Uber should be used for infrastructure, and also Uber shouldn't lead to the destruction of the planet. Um, so sustainable transportation, essentially, was this one here. And then the final one we have is, um, I think the top one says it fairly well. It's like fair, equitable, cost-effective, and accessible, rapid forms of transit. So it's kind of everything on the, the consumer side, with a specific piece addressed to the affordability for those who are low income because yeah we're having trouble figuring out how we pay people better but also make it cheaper um, so and then possible solutions we have here there's just a bunch of them a lot of them I think it was mentioned that like a, a lot of time we talk about like government solutions most of these are government solutions so that shows where we're coming from um, so this one is not actually it's, it's tracking all ride share and taxi usage and that was specifically um, for congestion with the idea that if we're able to track where all the ride share uh, cars are that are just like touring around the city waiting for someone to use them. If we can track um, density of those, we can kind of um, discourage um, high density of ride share uh, things not being used. So that would include like taxis as well as ride share companies, kind of like a pooled amount of data. There was the idea of um, adding a portion of each ride to being uh, like public transit funds. So saying like if you take an Uber, it's actually like uh, also paying one dollar to the TTC sort of thing. So using that to kind of funnel back into public transit. Um, no surge pricing for unanticipated activities. So that could be like floods or um, disasters and stuff. Kind of don't let the company surge price in that way. And this would apply to both. Oh, we're, we're kind of taking it holistically as that like ride sharing transit sort of last mile. So that would also be for taxi companies if they choose to redo their model. So it was less about the business model that companies use, and more about how we can make this beautiful, ideal, last mile transit. Um, taxation of ride sharing companies, um, sounds like that might not be an option, but we'd love to. Um, subsidized rates for low income riders. Um, and then we also had a problem with this one. Um, the risk was, where is it? Um, how do we income test for riders? Because we did realize that we don't actually care about cheaper rides for people that can afford it. We care about cheaper rides for those who are left out of the system. Um, surge price cap was another one where you can't surge price over a certain amount. Um, sharing economy ombudsperson. So this would be someone where if there are complaints about transit, you can go to them. Um, minimum service standards. So I think this was said over there as well. 
the idea of just a baseline, like regardless of what sort of service you are, taxi or Uber or whatever, there's a baseline service level that you should be providing. Um, limits of how many cars in an area at the same time. So this is once again through the, the rideshare taxi usage data. And uh, designated stopping areas for high traffic areas. This is to stop congestion, especially on places like Front Street, where it's just all the cars are stopped, not because of traffic, but because they're letting people in and out. Um, and then risks and barriers. And these are solutions. OK, problems. Uh, circular nature. If we improve this last mile transit, it's going to cause uh, greatly more traffic, which makes it harder to do it and more expensive, and people use less transit. So kind of like, how do you stop it from eating itself? Um, who's going to enforce this? Because it takes all levels of government in our current system. Um, and it also takes the cooperation of the different corporations. Income testing, uh, yeah, said that. Lack of open data is also a problem with that uh, congestion solution we have. Um, yeah, once again, political jurisdiction and regulatory frameworks, how do we make all those fit together? And yeah, talk about that. And then some of the solutions are stronger municipal power. So we kind of just said, like, Toronto should make the regulations say screw it and then see what the province does. Um, empower MLS, which is the. Say it louder? Municipal licensing. There we go, municipal licensing standards, and then enforcing open data standards. So like basically making them give this uh, tracking data stuff in a safe way that doesn't, anyhow. And then responsible bodies, uh, we ran out of time, so it says province, city. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll Of, she's like a PM to give to hand this out to the civil servants who is in charge of this particular issue. So they have to fill in this form um, about those data that they get together, and then they will hand this to Edith, and then we will review the data and talk about the things together. And then if there's something missing, then we will. Uh, make a research plan to see if we can interview somebody to gather those data that we think maybe some of the data are too biased. So that's basically how the process works. And if you are interested in um, about a document that you can feel free to take some of them. Thank you. And it's on the as well. So there's a digital copy. When you have disagreement on like what is the priority, because we had a bunch of problem statements essentially, and then we made like our solution was to just make a bigger, like all encompassing one, but then it became like really ideal and like very yeah, vague and like almost impossible to do. So that's one way to move like people to group agreement. Is there a better way to do that, or do you just kind of like let the disagreement because happen? Because like in in Taiwanese government, people tend to be really like down to earth. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, is that, is that <laughs> So, like, I would 
try very hard to push for the idea or idea space. So we may have the opposite problem. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we, we can't go practical. But just because we're sold these vague aspirational ideals that we're always like, come on, like how would that actually work? So yeah. our cynicism may come from wanting more. I don't know. I don't want to project. It's funny. You yeah. wouldn't characterize our experience as that. <laughs> Different? We're really good at selling big ideas yeah. that everyone can agree on. <laughs> We're bad at like practical things that you need to vote on. Sort of yeah. thing. Anyone has similar ex uh, experience? That sounds like a speech. Do you know what I mean? Like the aspirational mm -hmm. stuff just sounds like campaign rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe to us. But don't want to speak like that. Do you think it would be helpful if we try to um, write something more specific and concrete? So like, what does that word mean to us? So the kind of so I break it down. Okay. I think one of the challenges was also figuring out who we're solving for. Yeah. yeah. Because that's so like the responsible bodies. Yes, exactly. So, so many of the ideas cross responsibility, and we didn't have any discussion as to who we're designing for, which 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 uh, was a challenge around scoping. So our scope was really wide because everyone was a stakeholder. Yeah. Yeah. You made the perfect system for the whole. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it will help if we go if we go back to the stakeholder map and then see if they are particularly um, organization or like we didn't even body. consider the needs of competitors to be in the industry. Like you mean like we didn't actually like we were so focused on fairness and equity and environment. We were focused on citizens. Like no. We didn't even talk about how these businesses could be more about. We didn't care about companies at all in our little group, which may speak to where we all work. Would that be kind of what the responsible body section is for, though? When you like decide who's responsible? Yeah, you should be. Because so we ignore that. Reading. Okay, <laughs> that's that's very important. Okay. Yeah, we just ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sometimes when I'm and we with my friends and we have a large list of solutions for You know that thing where you make a list and at the top of the list is the lowest risk highest reward and the bottom is the highest risk lowest reward? You ever done that? So you just like, you go through each solution and then, I don't know, on a scale from one to five you rate the risk and you rate the reward and then once you've rated all of them you just, you just subtract your, your, your risk rating from your reward rating and then you order them in order of what had the highest score. It kind of gives you like an order in which to do things. Doesn't mean that any of them are bad ideas. It's just like you can do the higher risk ones when you, when you have more momentum. Scrub that ball. Yeah. We sometimes do the similar writing as well. We do like red, yellow, and green, like the traffic lights. <laughs> so yellow means you know, we need to quit and see. And green is something that we can crack up straight forward and straight away. And red is something maybe we should stop. To yeah. like re reinstate the uh, employment laughed. standards, yeah. Bring back eating. That's what I was laughing about. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. But I mean, people. I think the flexibility of the arrangement is seen as a solution for the rigidity, the perceived rigidity. Of eating. But. Of eating what foods? Frozen ones. I think there's room for a different kind of people. Twenty percent. <laughs> That's what I meant when I asked this question earlier about how you get really high level. Mm -hmm. And so then you think, oh, well, we can't reinvent, like we can't change what the municipalities, or we can't put, we can't change employment kind of standards up. But then it's like, well, can you talk about the need to though? Like it, mm -hmm. or is that seen as so high risk, high, mm -hmm. is that seen as such a high fruit on a tree or whatever those are? Mm -hmm. Is that seen as not worth talking about? But I'm like, but that's an equity issue that someone needs to keep talking about. I guess it depends who you invite to talk. Because if 
you get really practical, you bypass some justice issues. Mm -hmm. Well, not even the human job very practical. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the difficulty yeah. of, uh, yeah. of solving a really yeah. huge equity issue is still worth talking about. Yeah. Who can chip away at the other solutions while still knowing, like this, you know, the bigger policy issues, like would make them more monumental, significant. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, my, my name is Jin Jian. Uh, I'm a public servant and also the junior PO at Council of Agriculture, COA. And uh, before my brief talk, I want to share this photo with you. Uh, uh, this photo is uh, held by a PD uh, at an um, uh, year end reunion. Uh, and this is, <laughs> you find this is, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it renew, and the party is held by PDs. And uh, Audrey, Audrey is up there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm a junior PO. So uh, in COA, we have two POs, and the uh, senior PO is he here. Okay. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone is standing in a first uh, on the first floor, and we have a photographer on the second floor. <laughs> I think it's interesting, and this is one of my different photos. Now, yeah, I want to share this with you. Okay. Yes. Okay. First of all, I uh, I would like to introduce the relationships between the government operation and people, and uh, NDC. Yeah, NDC, the National Development Council, has uh, created a jo joint platform. And everyone, uh, anyone who has good ideas or opinions uh, can go to the joint e platform and promote his ideas. And with the numbers of votes, uh, over 5,000, okay? Uh, and NDC and PDs will start the PO10. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. And start a real chain to let the idea of the good opinions come true. Okay, uh, what we what's the differences between the traditional way? Uh, and I want to show you what's the PO way. We use the uh, te techniques like uh, join in platform and Slido. Yeah, Slido, especially for Slido. And because Lido is very useful for especially Taiwanese, and sometimes ta Taiwanese is so shy, and use Lido, yeah, you can talk what you want to talk with an anonymous. <laughs> yeah, this this is very useful for us. Yeah, and we use also the live stream together, uh, to uh, more transparency. Yeah, every every uh, everything uh, ev uh, what happened in the on the meetings, the collaboration meetings. Everyone can see that. Okay. okay. Uh, what made make us become a PO? Yeah. Uh, uh, that introduced my daily life or jobs. Uh, okay. The first one, I check the joint e platform every day to collect uh, any op opinions or ideas. Um, and then um, we hold the collaboration meetings. Okay. Sometimes lead by PDs and COA or just our own. Okay, and then the next, the open meeting information always, uh, we're using the live streams and or by any records online, yeah. No more, uh, more transparency, yeah. And sometimes the, the last, the hard one is we have, sometimes we have to in integrate the inside and outside units uh, at COA. Uh, okay, because, uh, besides uh, in COA, uh, we are very uh, proud of to, uh, to say that uh, we're making the administrative rules as the legal basis of our works uh, in 2018. Yeah, I think uh, maybe COA is the first ministry to do this. Uh, next. Uh, back to the joint platform. Uh, the frequently asked questions in uh, agricultural field uh, always that uh, food safety or animal protection uh, or disease control and animal rights that it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is the I think um, this is the first case COA uh, PDs have COA to uh, solve people's 
people's problems to understand what they are really need. Uh, as Barry mentioned the earlier, the Pongfu, yeah, the case in Pongfu, yeah. Yeah, so uh, turning to my final point on uh, the challenges we, we met, I think the hard one is uh, number two, uh, to transform the organizational culture is quite tough. Yeah. To extend the new methods class re requires more efforts. Yeah, to that uh, all the things more transparent. Yeah, it's very tough. Yeah. Uh, I think our our all make goal is everyone is PO. Uh, like no more PO, yeah. To that uh, all the tools, yeah, to make uh, every public server can use that to make their dreams come true. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, maybe the existing chain cannot solve the problem. We can find help them to. Uh, sometimes the collaborative meeting by PDS, we will ask other ministry to come to join, and we will try to find. Maybe you can find the solution at COA, but we can find uh, the solution at other ministry. Yeah, to maybe yeah, to find other solution to make. Could you just 
clarify for me um, the role of PO? Uh, is that a role on top of another job, or are you a PO full time? If I could be the job for full time, I would be very happy. <laughs> yeah, it's just maybe my. who does full time uh, from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he just got promoted. <laughs> system improvement that went really uh, successful. That the process went for one year, the, collabor the collaboration process from research to, to de de deployment. It went really successful. And all of the process in, um, include citizen participation, even during the design and testing phase. So, um, so because of that case, they realized that the importance of PO, so they have five more PO, I think four or five more PO from that uh, ministry. So I think there are around five PO, people for now. And also um, Ministry of Health and Welfare, they also have a PO team. And they... So um, different levels of agency. So uh, Jean, she sits in this level, and some of the ministry they realize the importance of PO, so they expanded PO team to um, subordinate um, agencies. So, for example, the Ministry of Health, uh, well, uh, Health and Welfare I mentioned, and also Ministry of Finance. And there are a few that has um, PO team within the ministry. So there are 70 POs in total. And we have 32 ministries. And also um, local government, because PO network uh, originally was established within the central government uh, in, the, um, in the cabinet office. And some of the local government see the potential of this mechanism. So city of Tainan, which sits in the south of Taiwan, they want to establish a TPO team within the local government. So we just went for the lunch a few weeks ago to conduct a workshop that initiate that mechanism within the local government. Any more questions? Um. So a big problem with a lot of, especially like uh, provincial government stuff like this, is funding. So this is maybe too detailed of a question, but how is uh, PETIS funded then within, is it because there's a minister that wanted, but the minister was also appointed. So how did, how did that come to be and how can we do the same thing? We don't hold any budget, so yeah, maybe this is the, the question for Audrey, but as far as I know, that we don't have, um, Audrey doesn't hold any budget. 
How do they hire people then? Um, <laughs> the ministry support. Yeah, through ministry support. So for example, Aurora, my another colleague, she is actually from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So Ministry of Foreign Affairs pay her wages, and then she she will be um, she got transferred to this office um, for the period when Audrey is the digital minister. So, so sorry, did you uh, imagine we might have had to like make a business case though to borrow those resources or not? Do we have a business case? <laughs> For profit? Um, you mean this, this case for a pity, this organization itself, or? To borrow the resources, given that the, um, like the salary, there is no specific budget for it, you're relying on the, the ministries to put the bill. Um, I imagine you have to write a business case for them to say yes to the state's resources, or that wasn't the case? My question is really, how did you get them to, to release that resource, if you would like, yeah. if, if that makes more sense? Um, I'm not, I'm not like involved in the human resources, so, <laughs> so I don't know too much about that. I'm sorry. But yeah, Aurora, she's back, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Wait, actually, yeah. come up here. Yeah, yeah come up question. here. So <laughs> the folks have a question like, how, because we don't hold any budget, Activities. So how can we, how can we, like hire you to be part of the PDS? And I've mentioned that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs paid your budget, but they were asking about like, what's the business case? Like, what's the beneficial between or is the organization? Like agreement between ministers. Yeah, any agreement between PDS and your organization? Well, there is no actually a physical agreement that I needed to sign. It's just a mutual understanding between the executive branch where the minister is holding her position in between this branch and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Like, he, like she mentioned earlier before, she gets to poach each person from each ministry. So I am one of them. And then when the minister says she wants a certain person, I don't think the minister from the foreign ministry would dare to say no, because she is the minister of without portfolio, meaning she holds a bit higher hierarchical ranking than other ministries, which empowers her to kind of, uh, sometimes you have to take the top down approach to get things rolling. She holds that kind of power and position because we are in the central government, in the executive branch, and the executive branch is the umbrella, and underneath there are 30 to 34 ministries. We are one of them, so that's how we function. But the downside of this office, of the, uh, the minister's office, is that we don't have any budget because the budgets are in 34 ministries then I have to do fundraising. I have to ask the foreign ministry to please give us money. <laughs> and when I say this is a request from the minister, I ask them politely, then they will eventually say, yes, of course, please go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the chemistry that, chemistry that we are holding on. And they are having the pleasure to support this trip because of course we are here doing public diplomacy, so I think it's a justified call. That's it. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, it's maybe it's a bit too general, but on the first slide you said you needed 5,000 votes on any petition. Um, uh, and I just wondered like where that, well you mentioned that it was 5,000, is that right? For the okay. petition. And I just yeah. wondered where that, why that number, like where that came from? Because that seems quite a relatively low number of people. Um, yeah. So I was interested, has that been a challenge that you get lots and lots of stuff coming in? Yeah. So um, the, the product owner, yeah. the Evolution website product owner is uh, NDC, NDC, National Development Council. 
And I think they got inspired by uh, little people from the from the states, and they. I think there are also a few references about Indonesian website uh, across the world, and. How, how do they come up with the number is based on the ratio of the amount, the total amount of the population and how many signatures for each e-petition uh, website from all over the country. And based on that ratio and our population, we come up with this number. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank <laughs> you. 